Good evening. Welcome to Storytime with Jason. I'm Jason, and tonight we get to do another ad hoc ad lib where I take three words at random and put them into a one to five minute story. And I have random word generator.com here up on my phone. Got the category set to medium. Let's see what we got. Oh, come on. And the first word is brush. Okay. Paintbrush, toothbrush, brush. Um, okay. Vest. Okay. Like a construction vest, uh, like a running vest, bulletproof vest. And uh, elevator. Okay. So our three words are brush, vest, and elevator. Well, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. And a, uh, let me think. Um, oh, that works too. Okay. Uh, well, once upon a time, there was a gentleman named Bob. And Bob was a elevator brusher. Now, by, some people would wonder, you know, what does Bob do el brushing elevators? Well, you have all the cables that run up and down, right? And they're the cables that move the elevator up and down. And it's very dangerous, very dangerous work for people to go climbing around in there. No one should ever climb around there unless you are a professional. And that is who Bob was. Bob was an elevator brush professional. He had a nice brown vest. That said Bob on one side and on one uh, chest pocket. And on the other one, it said elevator brush professional. Now he had a brush. It looked like a big toothbrush, right? But it was like as big as his head. And his job would be to climb up and down the cables because he was really good at it. He would climb up and down the cables and brush the cables, get all the dirt and grime off so he could put new fresh grease on it and keep the elevators running in good order. Well, Bob went to a job one day, and as he was climbing around on the cables, he heard a little a pit pitter patter of little feet. And then he stopped brushing and looked over his shoulder. He looked over his shoulder and didn't see anything. So he went back to brushing and whistling on him as at <laughs> whistling to himself. And uh, and then he thought for sure he heard it again. He looked the other direction. No, nope, didn't see anything. Oh, there he was, just hanging. Uh, by his little uh, harness uh, over all, next to all the cables and the elevator is way, way, way down below him. And he was by himself with him and his brush. And then uh, finally he heard a him <clears throat> behind him. And he kind of swung around and looked behind him. And there hanging on one of the uh, elevator cables was an iguana. And he looked at the iguana and you no, know, maybe it was just in his brain, but he thought the iguana was looking back at him a little confused. And then he was about to ask the iguana a question, but then he thought, no, iguanas don't talk, especially elevator iguanas. And then as he watched, the one of the hands from the uh, one of the iguana's little hands went to the iguana's mouth and he went ahem as he cleared his throat. And then he's like, What are you doing here? Well, Bob didn't know what to do to that. He looked all around. He looked up. He looked down. And he's like, am I really about to start talking to an iguana? Especially an iguana in an elevator? An elevator iguana? And he said, well, hi. My name's Bob. What's your name? And the iguana said, I'm the elevator iguana. And he's like, well, w w why do you live here? W what are you doing here? And the iguana just went on to say that it was one day it was a really... Really bad weather, and he was trying to get out of the rain, so he climbed the building, went into one of the air vents, and he's been the elevator iguana for a long time. And the and Bob, uh, the brusher, elevator brusher, was like, "Well, why? Ask why? What are you doing here to keep you busy? Aren't you bored living in an elevator?" And the iguana went on to explain that no, he wasn't, because he, using his tongue, cleans up all the little dirts. And all the grimes in the elevator, too. So just like Bob, who comes in here to scrub with his brush, he the iguana cleans it with his tongue. 
And Bob was really perplexed by that. He's like, well, does it taste good? And the iguana laughed and was like, no, it doesn't taste good at all. And then the iguana scampered up and scampered back down with a little glass of water. And he drank the water and said he has to drink lots of water to get the grime out of his tongue because it's like licking nasty things. And, and Bob was like, Bob said, well, you know, you probably shouldn't be doing all that. You should have a brush like me because I just use the brush to clean it. And oh, that iguana, the elevator iguana had a big smile. And the elevator iguana said, can, well, can you, can you, can I have a brush? And Bob thought, well, I mean, okay, this brush is bigger than the iguana, but then he had an idea. And so Bob, the brusher said, okay, wait one minute. And so Bob, no, went down the cables and then went out into the, uh, the gift shop in the, ele- in the, uh, ho- in the uh, hotel where the elevator was. And he bought a little toothbrush for the iguana. And then Bob scampered back up the cables and gave the iguana a little toothbrush. And so then Bob was able to go and work on brushing the cables and the iguana was able to use the toothbrush and not his tongue. And they were both really happy and they became best friends. And now every time Bob goes back to that hotel to brush the cables at the, in the elevator, he always says hi to his friend, the elevator iguana who has now started to bring some of his own friends along. So now there is an elevator raccoon and an elevator fox and an elevator bird. And they all hang out in the elevator and and Bob brings them toothbrushes to scrub the cables and to make sure, and all together, they work together to make sure the elevator runs really smoothly. So next time you're in an elevator and you feel the elevator go up and down, it might just be the elevator where Bob, the elevator iguana, and their friends all work scrubbing with their brushes to make sure the elevator's nice and safe. The end. Good night.